Good morning. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to Coppin State University as we celebrate a day set aside to acknowledge a pioneer and trailblazer in education, our namesake, Fannie Jackson Coppin. Fannie represented a relentless and selfless dedication to educating others, a quest for excellence, and an immense spirit of generosity. This is the legacy that Coppin State University has been built upon. We represent that same desire to reach and to teach and to pave the way for our students to eventually leave campus as leaders, just like Fannie. She possessed an ability to influence her students and led them to dream of becoming more than they thought they could be. And we've seen our students flourish in that same way time and time again throughout the years. Fannie never had children of her own, and so we like to think of ourselves as her descendants, the bearers of her legacy, tasked with carrying that torch that she lit, providing the light and opportunity that only education can provide. This is our mission which, after 118 years, is alive and well. We are committed to serving the various needs of our diverse, multi-generational student population as they pursue their personal and professional advancement through higher education. We are so very grateful to another inspired leader, our mayor, Catherine Pugh, for recognizing Fannie Jackson Coppin's indelible contributions to education, particularly at an earlier, more precarious time for when African Americans who are not regarded as equal or considered deserving of benefits that education provides. Mayor Pugh has a deep understanding of the role of education in creating viable and promising pathways to success. It is for this reason that she made Baltimore Community College tuition free, and we are honored to partner with her for BCCC students to complete their education at Coppin tuition free. We could not hope for a greater friend and champion than Mayor Pugh, and we are so grateful to her for this very special proclamation designating this day Fannie Jackson Coppin Day in the city of Baltimore. It is a testament to the importance of Coppin State University as an anchor institution here in West Baltimore and for our city and state. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of our great city, Catherine Pugh. Before you sit down, Madam President, I'd like to present you uh, with this citation honoring uh, this day. Yeah, I can't help but think that Fanny is actually smiling down on both of us today because of the relationships that we've developed and the contribution that you, I, will continue to make on behalf of all the young people in our city. Uh, we're here because she was such a great leader in our community. We're here because it is her 181st birthday. Wow. Uh, Fannie was born into slavery. Uh, when she was 12 years old, Fannie gained her freedom, and uh, where she was purchased by her aunt. In 1860, she moved uh, to Oberlin, Ohio, and enrolled in Oberlin College. Oberlin College was the first college in the United States to actually accept blacks and female students. Fannie became the first black American to be chosen as a pupil teacher at Oberlin College. In 1865, at the age of 28, Fannie graduated with a bachelor's degree 
In the same year, she accepted a position in Philadelphia, my hometown, where I was born, at the Institute for Colored Youth, ICY, which is now Cheney State, well, Cheney State University. Fanny began serving as a principal of the ladies' department at ICY, teaching Greek, Latin, and mathematics. Within four years at ICY, uh, she was appointed to the head principal. Fanny was responsible for the vast educational improvements in Philadelphia. She expanded the curriculum to include the industrial development and establish a women's industrial exchange to display the mechanical and artistic work of young black women. In 1926, the Merlin Teacher Training School was named the Fanny Jackson Coppin Normal School, now Coppin, in her honor. It's easy to understand why we're here today to pay homage to Fanny Jackson Coppin, because she made such a great contribution to education. And Madam President, when you were standing here uh, acknowledging the fact that we, uh, that I made Baltimore City Community College free, and the reason that we did that was because we didn't want any child in our city to feel that they didn't have a chance at a higher education. And it was really exciting uh, for me to walk by places like Gilmore Home, where parents came running out and said, thank you for making Baltimore City Community College free. And then I would say to them, if they finish Baltimore City Community College free, because of the partnership that we have with Coppin State University, you can continue on to earn your BS degree from Coppin State University. That's called really stepping up to the plate. And again, I think Fannie Lou would be smiling down on both of us for having the courage to do this. And you know, it was really interesting. I was walking down the hallway of a local high school, I believe it was the Renaissance Academy, and a young man came running out and he said to me, thank you, I am going to go to Baltimore City Community College. And I reminded him, finish that degree and then you can go on to Coppin. I was coming out of the supermarket and uh, at, in the checkout line, and a young lady said to me, I'm in the Mayor's Scholars Program. These institutions are so important to our city, but more importantly, to the future of our city. When I think about the needs of our community, and I think about our continued focus on reducing violence and educating our ch children and equalizing opportunities in our city, I know that our institutions of higher learning play a very important role in terms of how we continue to move our city forward. And while there were a lot of critics around making Baltimore City Community College free because we averaged about 200 uh, students a year going to Baltimore City Community College, we knew it was the right thing to do. I never forget one of the letters that I got from one of my critics who said, I just wanted to remind you that children going to Baltimore City Community College don't finish. And I would suggest that you take and apply your monies into some other programs, and I'll give you some examples of those. What he said was urban youth don't finish college. And so I wrote him back and I said, um, thank you for your note. I just wanted to remind you that I too was an urban youth. And not only did I finish um, Morgan State University with a BS degree, but I also finished it with an MBA degree. Given the opportunity to make choices that don't preclude um, them having to afford to do certain things, young people will choose education. We have to teach our young people how they reach towards success. And I can tell you that as a result of that, people did not think that we would surpass those numbers of 200 that normally go to Baltimore City Community College. Today, 545 students are at Baltimore City Community College. <laughs> Ultimately, our hope is that they will become Coppin State University students. Fanny stood for education. She showed the world that things can change. She took advantage of the opportunities even though in many cases, as you well know, history was not on her side. 
And what we've done is change the landscape in terms of opportunities for our young people. And so again, Madam President, I say to you, thank you for being such a great partner. And while we acknowledge this particular day as Fannie Jackson Coppin Day, I also acknowledge it as a partnership that has strengthened and grown as a result of your leadership. And so we look forward to continuing to work with you. And we were just discussing uh, an issue that we're facing in our city. As I tell people that I'm every day focused on reducing violence in our city. Too many illegal guns on the streets of our city. One life lost is one life too many. But yet, when I looked at, you know, because I'm really data driven, uh, your president knows that. And I looked at 2015 and 16 where we froze police positions for two years and people can't seem to understand why we don't have more police officers on our streets. I said, do the math. You know, two, two years, 2015, 16, frozen police positions. But nobody looked at the attrition rate to know that we were losing 25 officers a month, whether it was to retirement or leaving to go elsewhere. And if you do the math, that's almost 300 people a year. That's 600 people by the time I walk in the door as mayor. We still have an attrition rate. We've gotten it down to 15 individuals a month, 15, 18, sometimes 20. And what folks don't understand is that our capacity to train is about five classes a year, 40 people, that's 200. So you're only meeting your attrition rate and maybe an excess of maybe 20 to attack that 600 that you lost. And if you were to do the math, it would take you 30 years to replace those officers that were lost. And so we're working on a partnership with what I consider one of the great institutions of our community, Coppin State University. Because if we're going to get in front of the problem, that means we've got to double our classes. And we don't have the facilities to do so, but you do. So Madam President, again, I think Fannie Jackson Coppin will be smiling on the kind of partnerships that we've developed, the relationships that we're developing with our community, and the encouragement that we're providing for our students. So again, we declare this day, Fannie Jackson Coppin Day in Baltimore, but more importantly, we salute this institution and all that it is doing and all that it will do for the citizens of Baltimore. Thank you.